Hello. Thank you for hosting us here today. I would like to introduce the participants one more time, uh, starting from, from Marius. So here is Marius Parachas, uh, the president of Lithuanian Startup Cluster. Uh, near Marius, uh, we have uh, Elius Tvilis from the Ministry of Finance. Oh, economy. economy. <laughs> Sorry, economy. Uh, so here we have uh, Sigetas Metkos from the Ministry of Finance. Uh, Vito Toskasheta from the Blockchain Association, the president of Blockchain Association, uh, and Blockchain and Crypto Economy Association. <laughs> uh, Max Posnikov, Universal Blockchain. Uh, and Andres from the LB chain, uh, the project of Litovas Bankas. Thank you. So uh, now we are going to start uh, to, uh, to talk a little bit about the past. So in 2017, uh, Lithuania suddenly appeared on the world scene like the country where ICO is trending. And the whole world was a kind of a surprise by it. And I would like to hear from the ministries how how did it take it? What uh, uh, what what it was like for governmental bodies? Yeah, hello everybody, and uh, uh, of course uh, I think that uh, results uh, results are logical, and uh, we started uh, fintech movement uh, two or three years ago together with central bank, um, and uh, we niche, we initiated. Uh, institutional uh, working group, uh, then we started uh, working on uh, different uh, uh, legal acts. Uh, we uh, uh, tried to, uh, to engage all stakeholders uh, in Lithuania just to, to promote fintech movement uh, in, in Vilnius, Kaunas or in, in Klaipeda. And, uh, um, in 2017, indeed, uh, uh, there was a boom of uh, ICO projects in, in Lithuania, and now, currently, we are number three in the world. Um, uh, for me, uh, to be honest, also, it was a surprise, uh, but uh, now, um, now um, we are busy with uh, two objectives. Uh, one, uh, of course, uh, to grasp uh, opportunity of ICO uh, business, and second priority, our priority is uh, risk management. Thank you. Elias, as far as I know, you are part of the blockchain group in European Parliament. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about what's going on there? I mean, the trends, uh, what are the main ideas and where it all goes, the direction? Uh, <clears throat> well, uh, thanks also for joining. <clears throat> uh, opportunity to join the session and that's really interesting uh, to bridge this uh, topic between the governmental sector and also the startups. I mean there's a big uh, stereotype that in government you know these are all gentlemen very slow moving but in fact I mean we see this as a huge opportunity and myself and Sigidas uh, we are trying to close the gap where the world is moving and where the governmental sector uh, is operating. So in Europe Union, the emotion is super positive when it comes to the blockchain. Uh, most of the countries have signed a declaration around this, which says that uh, we commit until the next year already to issue first um, cross-border services uh, on the blockchain technology. But like yesterday, if you have seen, there was uh, a vo uh, voting for putting blockchain as a priority. So what that means, that means that uh, <coughs> Europe Union has declared that this is our preferred way on building the new solutions and that will mean that also the funding, the regulation and other things will follow up. Thank you. Uh, Vitautas, I have a question for you because you're some sort of in between uh, the governments and the, let's say, commercial market players. So how the situation is going on from your point of view at the moment? Um, yeah, th thank you for opportunity to, to, to be in the panel. Um, uh, we, as a crypto community, see this uh, this really great opportunity, and and uh, we're happy that our government, uh, our institutions, are using this opportunity so great, and and we're trying to build this ecosystem together, 
Um, just, uh, yes, some countries, they are a bit ahead. Uh, I'm talking about Switzerland. They, they just, uh, yesterday, they just announced uh, new regulations, new, new rulings about uh, tokens. Um, uh, they, 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 will, they will have uh, the around of eight, ten or, or so tokens, uh, so, so we, have, we have to keep the pace, but uh, I really, I'm, I'm really happy what, what is going on in, 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 in fintech sector, in, in uh, the crypto sector as, as a part of fintech, so it's, it's great. Thank you. Uh, Anders, here is a question for you. Uh, so you are from Lithuania, from the Bank of Lithuania, and the Bank of Lithuania is cooking something special for the blockchain community. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, of course. <coughs> uh, Bank of Lithuania received a lot of questions from various startups uh, asking how to regulate uh, cryptocurrencies, how you will, what is Bank of Lithuania view on some blockchain use cases? Uh, I can give an example. If a company comes to Bank of Lithuania and say, we will do an uh, investment fund based on blockchain. Uh, we do not know how to regulate these type of funds. We know how to regulate standard funds, but based on blockchain, we, knew, uh, we need to know the technology and then we can establish the regulation. Uh, for this reason, Bank of Lithuania established the idea called LB Chain Platform Service. So we will provide a blockchain technology-based platform where we pro in that platform we will provide the regulatory support. Uh, and the companies such as the uh, startup I have mentioned before, the, the investment fund on one blockchain, can go to test in our uh, technological uh, platform. We will simulate the various different use cases for them. We will simulate uh, attacks, simulate passive uh, activity and so on. And we, we will say after that, you can get regulated in Lithuania and in the European Union. So this is the purpose of, of LB Chain. Thank you. Marius, I have a question for you. Uh, so, as a president of Lithuania Startup Cluster, uh, what changes do you see during the last two years? Uh, are there uh, any new blockchain startups appearing? What's happening? Any trends? There are a lot of there are a lot of startups who are trying to use blockchain to collect some money for investment. That is the biggest uh, problem in. European Union in, in, in states and in, in other countries. But uh, the investment from beginning when you're trying to raise some money for your startup, uh, till the end while you receiving first money took sometimes few years. Uh, it's not so easy in some markets to collect money for seed, pre seed serious ideas. Uh, and the blockchain as ICOs uh, started to become one of the uh, smartest and fastest instruments to collect money for your startup to invest in startup and ideas what you have. So the Lithuanian uh, startup community and other countries started to uh, try uh, smart contracts and, and other kinds of uh, crowdfunding uh, uh, instruments to collect money for the small or medium or big startups uh, to raise money for their future development. And the problem was that there are no information how to start it. Even two years ago, nobody talked about possibilities to collect money on that. And we tried to collect uh, money through cryptocurrencies. And first ones was success. And after that, the whole system started to uh, spin. And spinning, 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 the prices for cryptocurrency rise. Uh, new uh, tools to uh, get investor money uh, in small amounts. An example, last year, the average uh, investor uh, investment to, uh, an example, Ethereum-based smart contract project was uh, one Ethereum or less. So the small investors who have uh, 1,000 euros or less started to invest in small projects. Uh, it's the tool to collect money, an example, from Korean, uh, Nigerian even investors to Lithuanian or uh, European startups, there was no possibilities previously on that. Uh, and this tool has become popular. That's why the ICOs raising. And at the moment, as, as we see from the end of February, most of the investors stopped and they're waiting for something. So 
we also still waiting and, and uh, looking at this too as a possibility, but nobody knows what will be in this summer or this September. Everybody thinking what the uh, price uh, crisis on some cryptocurrencies uh, changed the uh, people behavior to invest small amounts in uh, ICOs. But nobody knows how, what will be in the future. Maybe Bitcoin prices will grow again up to 20,000 euros and investors will come back. But maybe we will need to find the new ways to crowdfund our projects, even with fiat. Thank you. Uh, talking about the future in uh, talking about the future of blockchain protocols, I would like to ask Max, uh, how would blockchain affect the life of ordinary people? I mean, you're building the blockchain protocol and just mention ordinary people, ordinary businesses like grocery or something like this. What will change? Okay, Sandra, thank you for this question. Hi, everybody. I'm Max once again, and I am the guy from the other side of this ICO mess because uh, I represent Universa, a project that has uh, lived through an ICO, pre-ICO and all that stuff. Recently, in previous December, this project uh, raised something like $28.8 million through ICO. So I kind of know pretty much about that. And uh, what we are trying to do, we are trying to build uh, the whole new blockchain protocol for business and for ordinary people. Uh, just some numbers to give you a clue what it is. Uh, if Ethereum, Ethereum is brilliant, it's awesome, but it has only 20 transactions per second and uh, each transaction costs you like uh, 15 cents minimum. Uh, Universa has uh, 20,000 transactions per second and each transaction, yeah, it, it still costs you, but it costs you only one cent in fiat currency. It's not uh, uh, dependent on the popularity of platform like it is on Ethereum. It still stays the same in any case. So that's what we are building. And now talking about the future. Uh, you know, your question is pretty complex. I could talk for hours, but that would be disrespect to my colleagues. So I will try to briefly uh, address some issues. Not long ago, I had an issue with Lithuanian government. I, had a, um, I asked for a paper. The paper that says that I am not uh, condemned, I was not imprisoned, uh, I was not violating the law except for one um, Miss Park in, in Trakai uh, three months ago. So <laughs> I needed that paper. In my opinion, this paper should take uh, government something about uh, two minutes to make. Because you have to call police, okay, Max Posnikov, no, okay. You have to call to prisons, okay, Max Posnikov, no, okay. And then after two minutes, here is my paper. But of course, you know, it took me 10 days to get it. 10 damn days. So here comes blockchain. That's why we need it. This is the example that illustrates why, is, uh, why do we need blockchain in governments. Now, all the governmental institutions hold the same data but the data is decentralized among them. They do not trust each other. You may say, why? They all serve the same purpose. They should make people's lives better. Still, they don't. Each ministry has its own copy, and if they want to exchange the information, they need to pass their official messages, encrypted, signed by their signatures, by stamps, and all that stuff. Uh, when first European governments uh, apply blockchain as it should be applied, my issue would cost me two minutes, or it would be done even electronically. Because blockchain, the main purpose of blockchain, I'm not, I, I'm not going to talk about cryptocurrencies much, because everyone talks about it, it's not interesting. Um, I see one of the main purposes of blockchain technology is to get rid of all these shitty communications. A lot of big enterprises, if you are working in one of them, you know what I'm talking about. And of course, a lot of governments, because government is the biggest enterprise we can imagine. They all have a lot of communications just to get some approvals. Approvals of this, approval on that. Then they um, can, uh, have to conclude to combine it into one single approval. And it all takes time and money. And what blockchain does, and uh, in particular Universal does, it can make governments do not these communications, but it can, make, it can help governments to do what they are originally organized for. And the original aim of government is to make people's life better, right? 
not to bother them with their, all that stamps and signatures. So this is the main purpose of blockchain for government. I think I ran out of my time, so uh, I, I would like to get back to the future of blockchain if I ever have a chance <laughs> again. Sure. Uh, so you were talking about the government and we have government representatives here as well. Uh, do you see this like as a perspective in five years that governments will be run on blockchain protocols and all the paperwork will change? Uh, well, that's a good ambition and dream and I wish we set this as a target, but uh, I should be realistic and say no, this won't happen. And it's not, you know, for the uh, uh, bad purpose or intention. It's just you have to understand that the uh, government, it works basically retroactively. What that means? It means to control what was wrong in the past. So basically today we are here because we were trying to control many hundred years ago how people were behaving. So it's actually called institutional memory where they build on top of those regulations, right? And now to change the focus from looking back to looking to the future, that's a big step. So. Um, this won't happen like for many, many reasons, but uh, it shouldn't be, you know, uh, an, a disappointing message for me. I think that ourselves and having those brilliant gentlemen from this uh, panel and working closely with the government, I think we are now having the best momentum possible. So we have commitment from our minister who was yesterday giving opening speech. We have uh, huge support from the main ministry that controls the whole funding uh, in the country. So some, there are some very good indications that we might succeed. So you never know what will happen, but uh, let's aim for it. Great. Yes. Um, just to add a few words, uh, what Elios just said. Um, <coughs> actually, Minister of Finance uh, joined uh, Hyperledger community in, in, uh, in, uh, in January this year, and uh, we we have become associate member of, uh, of, of this huge com community and uh, very recently a special working group um, uh, has been established in, inside the community. But I, I would like to talk about uh, more about ICO, um, business in Lithuania and, uh, and Vito has just mentioned that uh, Switzerland, uh, other countries are uh, ahead of us, uh, but uh, I would like to say a few words what we are doing at the ministry and what uh, would um, uh, what uh, uh, would be expectations from us uh, in, uh, in, in uh, near future. Um, we are working on uh, guidelines on ICO uh, in Lithuania and uh, um, it will be published very soon. Uh, the guidelines will be constructed uh, in the following way. Uh, there will be uh, four parts. Uh, one part on taxation, another one on accounting. Uh, the third one uh, will be on, uh, on regulatory part. And the last one on uh, anti-money laundering part and risk management part. And, uh, now we are in the final phase of completion of uh, those guidelines and um, um, everything goes, uh, goes, uh, goes uh, very well and uh, um, according to our plans, uh, the guidelines uh, will be published uh, um, uh, in June. So uh, there will be a very competitive competitive uh, business environment for ICO. And uh, I would uh, also encourage all stakeholders, all the people uh, who are here, just, uh, just uh, to follow what uh, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Economy, uh, Central Bank uh, are doing in this respect. Great, thank you. Uh, about the question about the government. So maybe you've heard that uh, the Chinese government launched three funds to finance the blockchain startups. Uh, the total amount of funds is $150 billion, and these funds will be invested during the next four years. Uh, and I have a question to Marius. Uh, what do you think about like European scene in general, European startups in general? Uh, is it a good idea for governments to fund the blockchain startups, 
or it's not uh, this money are toxic and they kill in the competition? If we're talking about Lithuania, I have some 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 interesting news. Uh, Lithuania is starting to have uh, blockchain and fintech as one of uh, Lithuania's smart specialization. Uh, I think it took two three months to have it on paper and some voting, and after that, I think in September, maybe in October, we will have it in Lithuania smart specialization uh, activities. So the startups and innovation uh, projects can be financed even by European funds in Lithuania. So the government already uh, doing some steps to, to go on that way. If we're talking about Europe, yes, in Europe we have Cosme projects and Horizon projects. Some of them already have crypto economy, uh, let's say, uh, parts, without naming blockchain as the one of the uh, things. And I think uh, slowly, slowly, after voting yesterday and some events like next week we have an uh, event in Brussels on blockchain and industry 4.0, uh, some Lithuanian uh, crypto economy people going to that event also to, to, to talk with parliament members, to talk with uh, banks about possibilities to have blockchain in some cross-border projects and uh, projects from Europe, which coming uh, worldwide uh, projects. Yeah, I, I'll just uh, wanted a little bit to comment on this. I mean, we are now here like really well represented governmental body and we speak just like everyone would speak in parliament or in, uh, you know, in the government office. Um, and once you asked about this China uh, thing, I honestly felt very positive energy. And then I tried, while well, Marius was talking, why is that? So firstly, I mean, if you invest bl into blockchain in China, that basically means an opportunity to anyone around the world. So it's not that it will stay in China. So that's good. We'll have a money uh, inflow. The second thing, if you think about Chinese, right? I mean, you can also look retroactively into the traditional industry. So you see them being very good at manufacturing and being very good at copying something, but they miss several other qualities, so like creativity, right? I've been recently to Stockholm and I was absolutely impressed how every single building has its own design, how much they invest into the digital and creativity. That's great, I mean, we don't have that in Lithuania. But it's again, is it the quality that wins in blockchain? I don't think so. And there is the third component, which is also part of the innovation, is basically adaptation and finding smart ways to utilize. And I think this is exactly where Lithuania and uh, ex-Soviet countries are best, best at. Because if you think about some 20 years ago, how people were absolutely amazingly innovative with so little resources to do something really brilliant, like a brilliant, you know, uh, lunch out of nothing, a brilliant, you know, vacation house out of uh, nothing with very small income. So I think this basically in our genes, you know, to adopt from very little, so to speak, resources to make it something really uh, impressive. So I honestly believe that if we take those qualities like uh, production, creativity, adaptation, this is exactly what ad adaptation is the most uh, significant and we're exactly where are the best positioned in this region. Great. I want to, I want to add a little bit. The uh, LB Chain project uh, is funded from European structural funds and one year ago the economy, uh, Ministry of Economy of Lithuania uh, rated all the projects uh, for, for European structural funding and, by, and blockchain project, this LB Chain was rated uh, the, the best grade and it is uh, in, a, in the view of priority of Lithuania, so uh, already uh, Euro and European Commission is very interested in our project, uh, so we can say that the European Commission investing money into blockchain through our project LB Chain. Thank you. So not only China is investing in, in, in blockchain <laughs> businesses, uh, European Union also. Uh, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about it? And I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, because you are both like from the part of the government and from the part of blockchain projects, what are their main problem at the moment in uh, how can like governmental bodies and governmental people help them? 
It's for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, like um, the the main uh, probably the, the the main issue uh, with uh, matching uh, these young startups. Young, I I, I mean this uh, the 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 blockchain uh, part, uh, the, the, the fintech part is, is really young, young business. So uh, it's, uh, it's hard to match uh, these businesses to governmental requirements, uh, I guess, because usually government pro projects, they, they require uh, very high standards. Uh, so they require a lot of uh, professionals uh, doing the business. And the startups uh, in, in in blockchain field, they are pretty young. They they have no track record, no no nothing, and and uh, yeah, maybe that that is uh, quite a issue here. But but I have heard uh, uh, this um, governmental blockchain project uh, he has uh, already applications, uh, and 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 uh, I think that in the near near future we'll see this great product. Thank you, Max. Yes, I wanted to ask you because you yeah, have blockchain projects. I want to. I want to argue with you. Sorry, because <laughs> from what you say, it sounds like okay. We are governments, and we are uh, looking at all these startup guys, and they are too young, too green. They do not have experience. They don't understand what we do, and we they don't understand what we must be doing. Why do you think so? I think that um, the truth is quite opposite. Uh, that's not governments who started blockchain. That's not governments who invented Bitcoin or Ethereum or Universa. It's not governments who invented all these technologies. And now governments just sit and say, okay, we will adopt these technologies if you prove that they are good enough for us. This ain't working this way. Uh, it's, uh, it works like that. Startups will grow and they'll come to you. They, they will not ask for your permission to grow. They will grow. And Marius will agree with me. They will grow and will they will come, come on, to you. Come on, come on, come, come, stop. Okay, uh, okay. no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I'm not, I have not finished. <laughs> they will come to you and they ask you, okay, your government, we respect you. So what problems do you have? Because we have some technologies that we think you can use. And that's how things work. That's how it happens. Now, Marius, it's Sorry, here. can we have a real-time example? I'm from government body, right? Okay. Uh, and here's a startup. So it's okay. just like Le a real world example. Okay, Le let's, let's talk. Uh, I'm decided to create a new ICO. Oh, shit. No, man, it will be regulated. <laughs> so, yeah, but really anyway, tell me more. Re regulated or uh, at the beginning, you don't even start it. They will ask some questions and after that, will ban your uh, ICO promotions everywhere. Because we already have a legal act on that in Lithuania. Okay, so you predicted your future? Yeah, as usual, we have papers, uh, we have some, some, some examples in other countries. When yeah, yeah. Doing okay, that. Marius, I mean, I, I hear you, you are talking like a really, uh, like thing I don't understand, but, you know, I need to be re-elected, and that's my problem. I need, you know, some tangible achievements and quick ones that nobody understands but sounds cool. Can you make it? Yes, blockchain agro project. Cool, that sounds good. Can you make it for me? I I'll support you in the parliament. Uh, let's do it tomorrow. Yeah, I agree. Thank you. <laughs> so you just saw a real-time uh, conversation, <laughs> how it happens between the governmental bodies and uh, startups. But st yeah, but there is, another, <laughs> there is another side to, to this. Uh, uh, I've heard a couple of days ago, our uh, parliament voted for the, uh, for, for the right uh, for uh, Bank of Lithuania as a regulator to ban some uh, sites, some 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 websites, to basically to ban internet, to 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 save uh, to save the people that uh, that that uh, from from stupid uh, um, uh, decisions, and 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 just just to to save them money and and ban them from from the internet. So. Um, yeah, Marius is also excited about this uh, this new uh, thing here. Well, you can comment since. Uh... Yeah, uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned in the beginning, the consumer protection is one of the biggest priorities for the government and for for central bank. 
and uh, there should be a balance between interests from startup side and uh, the government side. And I think that uh, the balance is important and uh, there will be no way to go if, uh, if uh, there will be no um, any, uh, any uh, protection of consumers' rights and investors' rights. So um, we are working on now on a regulatory framework for uh, guidelines for, for ICO and uh, consumer protection element will be there and it's very important. Yeah, maybe I'll just again uh, jump aside again with philosophical views on this. Um, I mean, us as the Lithuanian government or the country, I would say the country, because there is no government. It's just an administrative uh, organization that runs this country on your behalf, basically, because you elected. Anyway, so this country can be as successful as the people are successful in the country. If there is a government which tries to be successful first or before the people, then it ended up just like those nice and exotic countries, uh, uh, North Korea, Cuba, and others, right? I mean, this is, shouldn't be the case. I mean, if we have thousand successful startups, then this government will be also as successful as that. And I think uh, everyone has to understand, I mean, even myself, right, and those gents around me, they had an opportunity either to raise millions in ICO or take and waste their time working for the government. So they have chosen the second. And why? Because they care about it. So I think this is uh, really, I mean, really close relationship, which should be, um, you know, not uh, destructed into two sites and say these are doing this and they're assholes and these are nice guys, they're doing good things. So this is basically really uh, connected and tangible. Uh, well, the thing is that blockchain protocol was created like as something decentralized, something which is not involved with any government in the world. So the cryptocurrencies were. Uh, the cryptocurrencies were created for you know, to collect money independently from the governments. And now governments are regulating blockchain and regulating uh, ICOs. Isn't there some sort of paradox? Uh, I would say that they are not regulating, they are trying to regulate. But so far, this is just a try. And now I'm going to pass the word to anyone who, who wants. <laughs> just, Max, why, why you started working with uh, Universa? Because I always liked to work with projects that aim to change the world. And why do you ask? You want to join? Uh, no, 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 it's, that's for sure. I, I have other projects. But, but it's just uh, very interesting to, to, to hear why, why people, why people are working for the government and why people are not working for the government, uh, I, creating this thousand startups. You know, I used to work with government. It was in Russia back many years ago, but uh, uh, Working with government for startups is really hard because uh, of difference of speeds. You know, government is uh, like a very powerful mechanism and it's really powerful and it's really slow. And a startup, when it comes with the, its startup pace, it just cannot, uh, they, they cannot synchronize usually most of the time. So that's the problem. That's why, and uh, I like uh, flexibility more than I like power. That's why I'm working with a startup and not with the government right now. Uh, Lithuania is a front runner uh, in terms of uh, fintech and blockchain and, uh, and, and uh, ICO. And uh, why? Uh, look what's going on uh, globally. Uh, Financial Stability Board uh, has been instructed by G20. G20, heads of government, uh, to pr prepare report by July, by July on ICO and cryptocurrencies. European Commission, European Commission, as well, uh, is working on on report to be submitted by November. We in Lithuania, uh, we will uh, prepare our guidelines for ICO uh, in June. So, in terms of pace of discussions in our country, uh, we are um, looking uh, very good. 
Yeah, <laughs> absolutely we do. Uh, so the next question is again about the relationship between like the real people and the government uh, in terms of basically blockchain, uh, not only the cryptocurrencies. So uh, talking about China again, the Chinese government uh, implemented some sort of personal score for a person uh, well, for his deeds and misdeeds. Uh, and blockchain basically gives an opportunity uh, to make all the person's transactions, financial transactions, documental transactions transparent. And uh, what is it for the governments and what is it for the real people? I mean, is it an opportunity or is it a huge threat? Because when you think about yourself as a governmental body, yes, it's an opportunity. We'll have all the data about everyone. But when you think about yourself as a person, would it be, uh, you know, comfortable enough for you to know that all your life is registered somewhere and everyone has an access? Yeah. <laughs> well, <clears throat> um, I don't think this is the only factor which will influence my, um, uh, my satisfaction of my life to be on a blockchain, right? And I think, uh, well, the more I think, the, the more I start to believe that the only target which the government have to set, it's not about the best GDP or the best uh, environment to set new business or the fastest uh, 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 laws we can take, but this is how satisfied our people are. And this is how you then shall prioritize all your uh, investments and regulations and stuff. So if our people say that they should be extremely satisfied by being on a blockchain, this will happen. But me personally, honestly, I don't think this will so much improve the quality of my life. I would more concern about um, not the technology alone, but basically on, like here, right? I mean, I see most, well, max 20 years of demographical uh, uh, this scope. So like I see young people from, for example, 20 <laughs> to some 40, and that's it. This is a very narrow demographical, uh, so to speak, group in this area. So we have to understand this is not the whole country. So I would say this is not about putting the blockchain, but basically convincing my grandma that she really buys in this idea. And if she buys in, then we have uh, you know, a joint agreement on how this country should be. And then we can measure, you know, how happy we are. Um, when I had been living in, in London, um, the, uh, at that time, there was a uh, discussion on CCTV, whether to have CCTV in every street. Uh, now, talking about blockchain and, uh, and fintech in general, of course, cybersecurity issues uh, 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 are becoming more and more important. And here in Lithuania as well, we, we have very strong position because, uh, because we have National Cybersecurity Center covering all the aspects of our life. Uh, be it public, private, military, or... So we have everything under one umbrella. And consumer protection, uh, data protection and issues are very, very important. And, and I think that, uh, uh, for example, new brand for Lithuania could be also uh, the cybersecurity in blockchain, for example. And if we put our emphasis on cybersecurity in blockchain, if we, we, we gather relevant people um, to talk about this, uh, then we probably we will be a star in the world. Sure, that's really good topic because uh, uh, blockchain uh, can enable uh, the, the, the systems to be more secure if, if, you, if you do it right. And uh, it's not everything is not, not everything is about uh, transparency and, and, uh, and the traceability, uh, trans not transparency, uh, uh, traceability because uh, you can show only these things what you want to show actually and and hide hide some other things uh, the, the, there are there are blockchains uh, 
working as a, as a security protocols as well. So uh, I think this topic is also really, really interesting uh, for Lithuania as a small country. Uh, also, I want to add a little bit. Uh, in my opinion, the blockchain uh, will be a back-end technology. And the, the, we are tracked every day right now. For example, Uber knows that I come here from my home. My bank knows that I paid in the, in the store yesterday. Uh, and if it will be uh, loaded to blockchain, it will be tracked anyway. Uh, but it can be crypto cryptographically coded. And uh, I think consumer will won't know about that blockchain is in the back end and working and uh, his programs is running on blockchain. He, he will know just he pay very quick, very fast, and then the receiver gets the amount of money he sent and then that's all. I'd like to um, transpond this talk to some philosophical area. Uh, first thing you have to understand about blockchain is uh, that it is inevitable. Like all the issues connected to technological projects, it will happen whenever, uh, wherever we want it or governments want it. Uh, we all be running some applications on blockchain in coming years. The second thing I want to mention is that Throughout the world history, whenever new technology emerges, some philosopher steps out and says, hmm, is this an opportunity or a threat? And that's a good question, and I have an answer. New technology is always an opportunity and never a threat. But uh, now you see what I'm talking about. Imagine the first most breakthrough technology of all the mankind. The wooden axe. That was breakthrough technology. And it brought a lot of opportunity because you could kill animals without, with wooden eggs and uh, you can, could have a larger family, feed more children, and uh, now we are here. Um, but with wooden eggs you also can kill people. But this threat comes not from the eggs. This threat comes from people. S the same thing with the cell phones, with internet. Yes, you can use cell phone to coordinate terrorist attack. And that's true, and they use it. But this threat not, uh, doesn't come from technology, this threat comes from people. And talking about blockchain, of course it will be used by hackers, by some um, malicious people who want to steal your money, steal your identity, manipulate your life. These are all issues that we are going to face in coming years. And in this, uh, I hope that uh, startups and uh, startups in cybersecurity and governments and governmental experts in cybersecurity will be together to face this uh, new approach in threats. And the, the last thing uh, I want to mention, we talked a uh, few words about China. I, um, my advice is uh, do not underestimate China because along with uh, the blockchain, they are running um, unprecedented uh, social experiment with that social score and it has uh, not, nothing common with any other country in terms of this experiment and we should be looking really really good at that and we shall um, learn on their experience. So that, that's why our government, uh, government uh, guys are going to China just to check what, what are they doing here there. <laughs> And we might implement in governmental sector this uh, social score. Come on, we have it. <laughs> yeah, of course. We have, we have it. We have I, it. I just wanted to, to return to traceability issues because uh, now uh, with the using the, this, this uh, new technologies that help people, uh, now you all are being uh, tracked by Google, by Apple, by Facebook, by, by all, the, all the services what, what you are using. Uh, what blockchain enables us to do, uh, we can just uh, track the trackers. Uh, we at least can know uh, when you will be uh, being tracked uh, or, or we can just change the, 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 the trace management uh, in, in a different di direction. You all will be uh, owners of your data and, and it solves a lot of issues with the traceability, with digital patient, with, the, with the, a lot of services. Just 
the, the, the small thing, the small issue at the moment, what, 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 we, what, what we have with blockchain technologies, with crypto technologies, is, uh, uh, is key management. Because uh, at the, the, what, what stops from mass adoption is those 12 or 24 words that you have to memorize just to be able to, 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 to manage your keys. And uh, really, we need solution for that. We need... Uh, Marius, so as a cybersecurity expert, uh, do you think that uh, blockchain is a secure technology? Uh, if, 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 if you're working right, if you're doing project from the beginning, from planning part, secure one, it can be the secure. And there are many issues with security in uh, every life from beginning when you even just not not even uh, uh, have internet you're already on a databases in this case you will be also in databases or on blockchain as a personality as your digital id an example you just built your data already in databases uh, they have your parents they have your uh, weight hate and and then all this data already exists but you're just a child if we're talking about blockchain things, uh, the same we have here. Uh, if we're talking about uh, personalities, uh, I think even Vitutas can explain some things about fake ACOs with the name of Lithuania, where he was involved. And we just uh, regulated, tracked, catched the people who did that on name of Lithuanian ICO uh, in two days. Everything trackable on internet. You just need to have the right tools, the right people, and some amount of time. In that case, I was in the United States. People worked in Lithuania, and overnight we did the big thing, and we tracked the one who did series of scams in different countries, uh, but he living in the United States. He have children, we have his personal code, we have his address, he have photos with family, and after that he decided, oh, sorry, boys, we will return all money to investors and won't do that again. Just can you stop to publish our personal data? Uh, uh, just, just a regular, regular uh, guy uh, becoming bad actor and, and, and thinking that, oh, it's a blockchain, everything is anonymous here, and okay, I, I will do this, uh, this, this, this scam, just uh, will take these uh, great guys from Lithuania, uh, put on the side and, and collect money. So yeah, he didn't realize we have Marius uh, that was able to pinpoint him in the same United States and so yeah so thank you for the excitement discussion we have to wrap it up and uh, now I would like to hear from each of you a couple of words about your vision of the future so basically what will happen with the blockchain and what will happen with the cryptocurrencies during the next three five years okay I can start uh, in my opinion, blockchain little by little will come to our life and change all the processes, uh, not completely, but uh, some uh, areas of the processes, uh, helping increase speed, uh, transparency, and then so on. And it, it will be a back-end, as I mentioned before, it will be a back-end uh, technology uh, that we will use uh, every day in our life, and we do not think that we will using a blockchain. Thank you. The most important thing that will happen this year is following. The hype will go away and then we'll see what's left. So instead of now every startup running around uh, shouting blockchain for this, blockchain for that, I will do everything on blockchain, you do not need to do everything on blockchain. Blockchain should not be used for everything. And I think by the end of this year, there will be a calm situation about blockchain. We will define finally what uh, are positive cases it has to be used for, what are negative cases there, it, blockchain is basically useless. And uh, my uh, second prediction for the future is that uh, uh, starting from next year, um, ICO will be a financial tool not only for IT business, but for any typical offline business. So it can be used by a restaurant to attract some, to raise some money and uh, uh, the regulation will be appropriate. And uh, so ICO would be not like, uh, wow, it's something overhyped. It's something that they will steal your money and burn your cat. No, ICO will be just a 
common normal instrument to attract money to your business. That's my prediction. Um, yeah, nice uh, would be will be nice to live there in, in your prediction. Uh, yeah, just uh, I, I agree on on uh, partly agree. Uh, just there are some I I, I would pinpoint those uh, three sectors here. Uh, the, the first is financing, uh, financing for, for uh, like a venture capital. So the new capital is coming and it will change this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, the, 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 the mechanism how startups are being financed. It will for sure, it will, it will change the ICO, how, how, how ICOs are happening. It will, it will fix the, the so, some, some things here. Uh, Another thing is uh, government will just uh, find uh, the, 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 the all all the beauty in the, in the, in using uh, distributed ledger technologies, and uh, they for sure will be using in 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 in, in a lot of uh, governance solutions here. Uh, just the blockchain itself as a technology, it will go. Uh, go to, into background. We, we, we will not see it. Uh, we will not care if the business is built on blockchain, on distributed ledger. Uh, there for sure, there will be there will be compon companies that will uh, fix the issues with uh, with key management, and we will see just just nice usual uh, user interface. We will have user experience, and we will know that. In the background, there is this uh, system traceable, uh, trackable, and the data belongs just to, to the data producers, to the subjects. Uh, all my data is uh, with me, and I have access to, to, to the data. And Only two remarks from, from uh, my side. Uh, uh, the first one uh, is the following, that uh, all public institutions um, are very open for innovations in, in uh, Lithuania. And second remark is uh, there will be no prediction from my side. Uh, we are not saying what we are doing. And you will, see, uh, you will see very soon that there will be new financial instruments in Lithuania appearing. Uh, the first uh, guidelines will, uh, will be published in June on ICO. Uh, in autumn, there will be a package of legal acts uh, on investment funds. It will be the best jurisdiction for investment funds in the European Union. And then uh, in spring next year, there will be a package of laws on uh, covered bonds and securitization. So our goal is to increase number of financial instruments in Lithuania and uh, the objective is uh, to become uh, the best jurisdiction for financial services in the European Union. Fantastic. I think the gents covered very well. <coughs> then uh, I'll just maybe tell that at least myself, I'm more excited not about technology itself and those smart contracts and uh, other cryptocurrency opportunities. I'm more excited about the new ways of doing all things. So those new business models, which I think should remain forever. So this is about making something differently from the past. And I think this is the most important thing. And the blockchain is just one of the things which currently enables most, but we will be having much more than this uh, very soon, I think. Um, yeah, and um, my suggestion might be that um, Again, guys, I mean, think about the future, right? And once you think about the future, what do you feel? I mean, do you feel about waking up in the morning and uh, having a million dollar in your pocket? Or are you waking up and you feel like uh, you are in control of what the government is, what kind of services we provide? You are satisfied with the living in this cold country and you are uh, just, you know, a happy person. And I think if you make yourself clear, what is those values that you will value in five years? This is exactly where you have to put your each decision. And if you think the blockchain will help to achieve this, go for it. I mean, if you think you now have to go to the monastery and be a monk, go for it. I mean, 
just there are so many ways to become a happy person. Just pursue your dream. Well, <laughs> don't think about future. <laughs> Let's do the future because government is, is we. We are a country, not, not these guys. They, they're just helping us to, to achieve some of our t goals and, and to have a bright future. Uh, blockchain, uh, autonomous cars, uh, artificial intelligence, just a tools. Come on. We are startups. We must need to serialize the creation of startups on any kind of these technologies, maybe even inventing new technologies. Yes, we don't like some rules, what's in this country, but maybe let's create some blockchain-based technologies for government, uh, electronic voting, maybe electronic uh, tools to offer some new laws or, or to monitor the existing laws and uh, to monitor possibilities to change their life or in the future for us, for our children. Uh, there are many possibilities in this small country with a new government, with the new government in two years period, because next year we will have voting on some, some, some uh, political things. Maybe it's the time to start and be prepared for next year. Thank you. So give your applause to our experts. They really deserve it. Thank you, dear panelists. Uh, and now before they go, I have a short announcement for blockchain uh, influencers. I have five free tickets to the Techonomics uh, uh, conference in Tallinn next week. So if someone is looking for the further discussion, please come up to me and claim your tickets. Thank you. Thank you.